how you feel about uh, this web summit? Well, it's the first web summit I've been to, so it's a unique experience. I've been to other in, uh, in ICT conferences, but this is fairly unique in the sense that in two ways. One is there's a huge content and a kind of frenetic energy and a buzz. The second thing is there are a lot of people who are in the what I call the millennial age group who are very much younger than me. Uh, and that is very invigorating. Uh, what I'm missing a little bit is the focus because you need in one way the energy and the ideas, but you also need the focus to make it successful. Yeah. But wonderful experience. I mean, I was walking around in the four or five days and the buzz was tremendous, but there were so many ideas. These are megabits of information, but they're unconnected. Uh, you know, when you're downloading uh, from a <coughs> website and you don't have enough bandwidth, you yeah. see a, a few pixels emerging, but it's all scattered. But you have to be patient till you get the full picture and then you get a good 3D graphics. Now, we haven't got to that stage here in the forum yet. Uh, I hope all these people, when they go away, uh, these uh, things will form and then the innovators will come. I see lots of uh, companies and people that are kind of building some business and trying to build some answers using open data, using artificial intelligence. Well, uh, let's uh, focus a little bit more. I think the area of big data and open data are not exactly the same, but we are certainly in a, in a period of big data. Uh, somebody or some is collecting enormous amounts of data. It could be the government, it could be private businesses and so on. Uh, whether it is open or not is another matter and how it is used, that is the critical question. It can be a huge force for good, uh, it could also be used in a way that is, in a sense, unsustainable. For example, uh, traditionally um, companies have used uh, data on consumers uh, to promote sales of their products. So the advertising, I mean, you get tweaked to buy an extra tube of toothpaste uh, because they have studied the habits of the consumers and they know exactly how to put it. Now, uh, we know that more and more consumption for the sake of consumption is not necessarily the sustainable way to go. I personally feel that because humanity is uh, now facing multiple crises, we really have to discipline ourselves to use this enormous information uh, mother load, so to speak. Uh, and we have the analytical tools, perhaps to shift people very much more in the direction of sustainable consumption and businesses in the direction of sustainable production. And then if we can bring the sustainable consumers and sustainable producers together, this is also a data issue uh, through maybe web-based platforms, uh, then we can create sustainable communities and those sustainable consumer producer communities will grow and then they will spread throughout society. That is the positive vision of the big data. We know that we have a problem with climate. Are we actually really doing what we need to do to change it? Well, um, I think some of us are. The question is, are there enough of us? Because in any evolutionary or revolutionary change, you need a critical mass of people to make a move. Now, my belief is, and I keep saying this at many conferences, we are at the edge of a cliff, and you could think of it as a climate cliff, or it, it, lack of resources, food, water, any number of things. Either we are wise and we move away from the edge to safety, or we fall off the cliff and then many millions will die. Either way, change will come. But the question is, uh, are we wise enough to do it? Now, certainly the tools are available. I mean, I've been talking about methodologies and other things. Uh, there's one that I've devised called Sustainomics, which is the 
science of, of, of uh, making development more sustainable from, for 25 years. And this has been applied and so on in many uh, places. Uh, it, it has evolved into a pathway which I call the expressway to sustainable development. It's called the balanced inclusive green growth path, which means you have inclusive, which is the social dimension, green, which is the environmental dimension, and growth, which is the economic, the sustainable development triangle. Now the question is, do we have the wisdom to follow this path? Maybe artificial intelligence will help us to make sense of some of these huge amounts of information uh, and not leave it to random chance of some brilliant person saying, ah, I, I found the solution. Yes, that will happen. We need human innovators because these are human problems created in many cases by human beings. But we need a little bit of help because we are at the edge of a cliff. We don't have a lot of time now. So there are a lot of things we can do in the short term, medium term, long term, uh, and we have to integrate all of this because we cannot solve one problem at a time. Okay, that is the answer to your question. Uh, it's not just an economic issue. Uh, if we think that we only solve climate, no. We have to also solve the water and the energy and uh, all of these together, and we have the methodologies and the tools to do it. If artificial intelligence and all these changes are new things, maybe we can use those also to help us to make this transition. So I am hopeful, okay? I'm always hopeful. Thank you again. Thanks,